What's up everyone, welcome to episode 7 of Game Dev. In this episode I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up those uh, uniforms here that we had, the matrices. And we're also going to add one for color here. So first off, let's just add these back in. Uh, first off, we're going to add the perspective matrix in here. Then we'll multiply it by the model view matrix, and then multiply it by the actual position. Okay. Uh, and then we want that color in here, and if you recall, uniforms can be accessed in both uh, the vertex shader and the fragment shader. So we're going to do that here, and we'll just make it a vec4, and u underscore call color. And we'll just set it right here. Okay. Well, that'll set up those two variables in here and it should allow us to access them in our main class. So, as we did with the position location, we actually need to get those variables, and since we're going to be... We're, we'll actually uh, set them in the render function, we should probably create them up here, so they're accessible. And these are type uniform locations. You can use vars still, vars will just be any variable, uh, but we're going to specify these ones. Say P matrix location, MV matrix location, and call location. And you access those variable indexes similar as we did to the uh, position here, except that it's not an attribute. It was a p matrix is equal to gl dot get uniform location and shader dot program, and then the name of it is u e matrix. Okay, we have two more of these. Model view color. This one was just v underscore call okay so now we can access those let's actually set them up in here before we do that we need to tell gl a few things first off we need to tell it about our rendering canvas so we're the viewport so we're going to say canvas canvas dot width and dot height that's just going to tell it a little bit about it and since we also have some depth we should clear the depth buffer depth buffer bit as well depth buffer bit okay. uh, now under the shader dot use we're going to actually we should probably create this model view matrix outside here say matrix 4 and the matrix new matrix 4 dot identity that'll just set up a brand new matrix 4 for us and make it an identity matrix and then we'll just need to clear it out here so mv matrix set identity there we go uh, we'll also just translate it back a little bit uh, translate zero zero and we'll just go like negative uh, five just to push it back into the canvas a little bit and then we'll set that in actually we'll just set up the other ones first so we'll create another one matrix four the perspective matrix and OpenGL WebGL has a bunch of functions to create perspective matrices but we're just gonna do Make perspective matrix. You can do different types, but we're just going to use this for now. And we will set it up. The FOV will do 90 times pi over 180. That will this will allow us to edit the actual FOV, to get an actual FOV uh, field of view. The aspect ratio is just going to be canvas dot width over canvas height. Z near 0 0.01 and Z far is 100.0, just for ease of use. Uh, next up we need the color and the color if you recall was not a matrix for but instead it was just a vec for so we will just make it a float 32 list uh, call new float list from list and we'll just say 1.0 0 0.4 0 0.4 1. so again red green blue alpha so just come out to like a ready orange color. Now I actually need to set those for OpenGL as we did up. Where was it? Somewhere. Somewhere. This. We actually need to set it up so that we know these colors and such. So we'll say GL dot uniform matrix 4FV because that's what these model view matrices are. And this will be first the P matrix. Let's do that first. Location. We do not want to transpose it and P matrix storage to get the actual data. We'll say gl.uniform for a fee again for the mv matrix. Location, false, and mv matrix dot storage. And finally, gl.uniform. Now, this one is not a matrix. This is instead just a four vector float. There we go. And this is call location 
call. Okay, now if we run this, we should see our nice little triangle pushed back into the canvas a little bit. And there it is right there. So that's it for this episode. Uh, next episode we'll probably do some scaling of the actual canvas and making it fit with the browser right and actually changing this color location into a vertex data so that we can actually have uh, uh, gradients, that's the word. Or maybe I'll do textures, I don't know, we'll see. I'll see you guys next episode, thanks for watching.